beginning of our time together, whether you might want them to just turn, I'm guessing that you've said hello to the people you're sitting in a pew with, but you might not have said hello to the people behind you or in front of you. So would you like to just take a moment to say hello to those people around you? So, Lord, for all those things that we have thought about and all of those things that have happened this week that we haven't had time to remember to run through, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for one another gathered here today. We give you thanks for the conversations, those that have been easy and joyful and those that have been difficult. Those moments in the day when we have known you with us Those moments when we when you have been with us and we have been distracted. So we pray together. Loving God, we, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude, and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Stand as we sing together. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul.
ceases. So we come to that time now when we pause for a moment and reflect and think of the things that have happened in the past week, maybe the things we've done or said or thought that maybe are dishonouring to God and to ourselves. So just have a moment and reflect on those things and then we'll bring them to the Lord in confession. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world and knows every word and deed. Let us then open ourselves to the Lord and confess our sins in penitence and faith as we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew the right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we receive God's forgiveness. May the God of love and power free you from and forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And so as forgiven people, we sing together. Please stand if you wish or if you're able. Jesus, be the centre. <laughs>
think we'll go to. So it's time for them to come out now and we'll pray for them before they go to their group.
come and bring God's word to us. Heavenly Father, may the words I bring to you today be of help and encouragement to those who are seated here and perhaps help them bring you near, nearer to you. Amen. When I was preparing to write my talk for this service, I looked up the reading from the letter to the Hebrews and discovered that most of my resources use this reading particularly on Christmas Day, which was quite a surprise to me. However, the revised common lectionary puts it here, so that's what we've got. And today, it, it's, oh, the church is also celebrating the Feast of St. Michael and all angels. And this is where our Old Testament reading fits in so well. So I'm going to speak briefly on that and then a little bit mostly on the letter to the Hebrews. In Genesis 28, we heard of Jacob's dream about a ladder, angels popping up and down to and fro from what we can assume is heaven, and the Lord standing by the ladder. And he spoke to Jacob in his dream, talking about the land where Jacob was sleeping. Sounds marvellous, doesn't it? This is the land that is to be given to Jacob, all his descendants, <coughs> and they were to become a blessing to all the families on earth. And they were to know that God would watch over them wherever they travelled and bring them back to this land in due course. It's interesting that Jacob, who was sent away from Beersheba after tricking his dying father Isaac into giving him his blessing instead of Esau, so someone very much who got things wrong, as well as right at times, is the one that is promised God's blessing on top of the blessing from Isaac. Esau, the eldest son, had previously given away his birthright to Jacob. But it wasn't until Isaac pronounced the blessing over Jacob that this entitlement was officially and irrevocably settled on Jacob. Perhaps Esau, in expecting his father's blessing, was also expected to have his birthright given back to him with all the benefits that that might have entailed. Instead, Esau became very angry and decided to kill Jacob. <coughs> and sadly, this anger blinded Esau to the wrong he had done in the past, giving away his birthright. So, Jacob came away and left a very angry and jealous and bitter brother behind him. Interestingly, of course, Jacob, after being blessed by Isaac and by God, would later be paid back for his trickery when he was tricked by Laban into marrying the elder daughter, Leah, rather than Rachel, whom he wanted to marry. And because of the years he spent serving Laban and working there to obtain the one he wanted, it was quite a few years before Jacob actually got back to the spot where he had his dream, but he was kept safe by God in the meantime. The letter to the Hebrews is quite a mystery in comparison with so many other letters in the New Testament. We don't know who, who it's from, or specifically who it was intended for. But we mustn't get let that sort of frustration and lack of clarity get in the way of enjoying the richness and the flow of ideas that the letter to the Hebrews has. Now, our passage began at verse 5, but the four verses before that provide us with an introduction to the whole book, as well as the rest of the first chapter. So if you don't mind, I'm going to just read you those verses to, to take us into what we heard and read. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty 
on high, having become much more superior to angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. So that just leads you in to our passage from Hebrews. Tom Wright, a theologian who's written a series of helpful books on, on each of the different books in the New Testament, has some useful thoughts to offer us. He points out that while we spend time and thought in buying presents for the people we love, sometimes the lovely wrappings of boxes prove to be of more interest than the carefully selected contents. I think this is particularly the case, isn't it, when we see small children um, and young people unwrapping presents at Christmas. And of course, actually, some of my other friends are really pleased with the paper and they put it away and save it to use it again. So, not just the child, perhaps. The letter to the Hebrews is anxious that the people it's written to shouldn't make that same mistake. They shouldn't get so wrapped up in the trappings that, and the wrappings that they miss what's happening in the present inside. Now, all the very earliest Christians were Jewish before they became Christians. However, by the time this letter is thought to have been written, Jewish Christians had got used to Gentiles being part of the Christian family as well. And they understood that God's purposes, after many years of preparation, had finally been unveiled. The wrapping had come off the present, and the present was Jesus himself. God's own unique son sent to pull everything that the law and the prophets had spoken of. So now they could move on with the next phase of God's plan and live out the new one day by day in their lives. But, and there is always a but, isn't there? Some Jewish Christians found this really difficult Lots of their family members, friends, and neighbours too, hadn't accepted that Jesus was the Messiah. And because of this, regarded them as seriously misguided and disloyal to all that God had said earlier. No doubt they would have put pressure on the Christians to go back to the old Jewish ways. Because to them, the law was a magnificent thing, given by God and it shouldn't be disregarded or put aside at all. In fact, in the Jewish tradition, the law came beautifully wrapped, so to speak, because it was thought to have been given to Moses by angels. The long argument about God being better than um, Jesus being higher than angels carries on throughout Hebrews, and it was written to show the way forward it's an argument designed to show that you can't go back to an earlier phase of God's purposes and must go forwards, pressing on eagerly from within the new stage toward the one that is yet to come. And it begins with examples from the Jewish scriptures themselves, the Psalms, that the long-awaited Messiah was always intended by God to be superior to the angels and therefore superior to the law that the angels had brought. And much more of that comes in chapters two and three. Obviously we are only on chapter one. Hebrews explains that the law wasn't fixed for all time. It was part of God's preparation, part of the beautiful wrapping in which the ultimate present and God's gift of himself in person of the Son would be contained. This is where the letter warns against the mistake of playing with the wrappings instead of concentrating and looking at the present itself. In our passage, there are quotes from Psalm 97 to show that God intends the angels to worship the sun, and quotes from at least three more passages from the Psalms to contrast the Messiah with the angels. There's bits from Psalm 104, Psalm 45, and so on. And it gives, the, it gives um, a real flavour of the fact that the King, Jesus, can be called God, and 
about exercising a sovereign reign. A good reign that a king would lead properly, showing good character, justice, and following the rule of the law in all their doings. One of the great themes about God's future purposes throughout the Bible is that God longs for and promises real justice. I'm sure that's something that many of you will have absorbed through your, your long periods perhaps of reading the Bible or reading passages over again. I think we would all benefit from reflecting on that promise as we know these days that through the papers, the radio, the TV, we hear about the injustice and wickedness that flourish all over the world. God's aim of forgiving the sins of his people, much more of which comes later in the letter, is all part of the larger aim, which is to create a world in which evil finally has no place. This will all come about through the Messiah, the true anointed king, not through the angels. <coughs> the Messiah will be the same yesterday, today, and forever, we're told. Even when everything else changes and decays, he will be the same, and his rule will last to all eternity. The writer of the letter to the Hebrews has their eyes fixed firmly on Jesus, which is where our eyes should be fixed too. Hopefully none of us here today will be tempted to abandon Christianity in favour of some sort of Jewish belief or Judaism, or even follow any other faith in an effort to expand our spiritual horizons. This letter should serve us as a warning and an encouragement not to get too involved with all the wrappings instead of valuing the pre real present they contain. Each one of us must pay close attention to who Jesus really is, the role he played and still plays in God's plan and to that we should pay close attention to the life of worship and service to which he, and he alone, calls each one of us. Amen. Thank you, Francis. It made me think what you had to say about the, the, the gift and the wrapping and Jesus being at the centre. It made me think of us here today that we're all from different traditions, different ways in which we worship. Uh, we all have preferences about the way we like to worship, the kind of music that we like, and that's great. But what's really important is that whatever we like, we need to put Jesus at the centre of it all. And that's what that said to me this morning. Thank you. So we're going to sing again now. We're going to sing a, a well-known, good, good old day, be that my vision. Please stand up your own. <coughs>
strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. And Jane, a reader from uh, St. John's of the Road, is going to be Let us pray for our world, for the church, and for our communities. Holy God, this morning as we pray with Christians around the world, we thank you for the freedom we have to pray openly to you without fear of persecution. We pray for all our brothers and sisters around the world who must worship in secret and live in fear of persecution for their faith. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for our world. Merciful God, we pray, we pray for peace throughout the world. We thank you that there are still people in this world prepared to be peacemakers, to strive for justice, understanding and reconciliation. Heavenly Father, we come before you with hearts burdened, by the ongoing wars around our world. We pray for the escalating situation in the Middle East. Lord, we pray for peace in this area between Israel and Hamas, and where the long-standing conflict between the two have now reached a crescendo and is getting very, very dangerous. We pray for the ongoing war in Ukraine, we pray for peace in that region too, and we ask that the countries who are helping Ukraine will continue to do so until a peaceful solution is found. We pray for an end to the crisis and for a peaceful resolution <coughs> of the conflict. We pray that decision makers will hear God's voice and that those with the power to decide for peace will be granted wisdom humility and compassion. And we pray for the people of Sudan, where an internal power struggle has led to a full-blown civil war, displacing millions and leading to a catastrophic humanitarian condition. And we earnestly seek your divine intervention and mercy. We lift, we lift up our prayers for all of the, re all of the regions mentioned, and for those that aren't covered in, on our television screens and in our newspapers. We yearn for peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. <coughs> Father God, we pray for all people in government and authority. We thank you for our freedoms where we still have the right to make our views and opinions known to our government. Help us and them to remember that our rights, with, with our rights come responsibilities. We pray for the nations where there is no freedom to speak up against injustice and corruption. We pray that their leaders will change and choose the path of justice and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. We pray for our families. Loving God, we pray for our family and friends. We thank you that we have food to eat, clean water to drink, and homes to live in. We pray for the many millions of people around the world who do not have these basic necessities of life. And we thank you for the many organisations that help people throughout the world and we pray for their continued financial support and your wisdom to choose where to spend it for the benefit of those most in need. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> and we pray for our communities. Gracious God, we pray for our communities and for the many people we know who are unwell. We thank you for the medical staff who provide care and healing to those who are ill whether in body, mind, or spirit. We ask for your healing, your peace and comfort for all those who are ill or who are mourning the death of a loved one. We pray for our parishes here in Gelding Deanery 
and to those who are in, in Terechno, some who have been without a vicar for a long time. We ask that you would give wisdom to those in authority who seek to find a solution to the need for more clergy in the diocese and around the country. We ask that there will be stability in our parishes, especially Colic, St. John's Carlton, um, St. John's Colic, and St. Paul's Carlton, and uh, St. George's Netherfield, and other churches represented here today as we seek to work together in the coming months. Give us strength and hope as we await the outcome of the application for funding by the diocese. Give us your peace and help us to remember that your will be done as we move forward. Heavenly Father, as you lead us into the coming week, help us to remember that, that, that when we face hard decisions or difficult work, or when we enjoy and have fun with our families and friends, that you are with us and share those times. And we now say together, I start to come to the comment. Just just now. So the comment for the 18th Sunday after Trinity. God, our judge and saviour, teach us to be open to your truth and to trust in your love that we may live each day with confidence <coughs> in the salvation which is given through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand with me and join me in the Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share the peace with one another. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another, those around us, a sign of God's peace, a reminder that his peace is with us.
preserve your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in our Christ. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in our Christ. And so we praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, and he gave it to them, and said, Take Eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was ended, he took the cup of wine, and again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. <coughs> Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Lord of all life, we pray today that you would help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes, and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so being made by the made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and 
And so this morning, draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. So as we receive communion, you're very welcome to come for communion for a blessing. Um, we'll come up the middle and go to the side. Uh, we've got two points of chalice. If you would rather the bread was dipped into the wine rather than sharing the chalice, um, if you want to go to Francis, he will do that for you. Um, and if, you, if you're happy to share the cup, um, then Di will be holding the cup. Is that okay?
pray a final blessing for us. Let's give thanks for all that God gives to us. And so, Lord, all things come from you, and of your own do we give you. We give thanks, Lord, today, and we ask that we would use this to your glory and in your name. Amen. Amen. So thank you very much for joining us together today, and I hope uh, you feel encouraged. I hope we have met with God this morning as we have worshipped worshipped Him across the deanery. Uh, you're very welcome to stay for tea and coffee and for conversation um, and hang around. If you want to talk to me about anything, I'm here um, for a few moments after the service. So may the Father, from whom every family in earth and heaven receives its name, strengthen you with his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And so today and always, go in peace to love.